Today's practice is going to be based around one day cricket and specifically we're going to look at bowling spin, bowling those slow overs in the middle of the one day game which is a bit frenetic but we're going to try and recreate a practice here that sets up the simulation of the game. The situation we're coming into is the 20th over of a one day game, three wickets down, you've just come to the crease so you're not going to be blasting from the word go but you've got to look for some gaps and from a bowling point of view we've got two off spinners and a left arm spinner. The fielding positions are going to be really important so to make it really accurate is to try and put some stumps or a marker down on those key positions that the bowlers can put down and you'll know the angles from your bowling and where you might get hit and that'll give the batsman another chance to make it as specific as possible. One day cricket for me is the spinners are a blend between attacking and defensive and I think it's just trying to weigh up the context of the actual situation you're in. You might find that the top order have been blown away by the pace and the new ball and you're bowling at the middle order that are trying to rebuild. You might find that the openers are still in, they're off to a flyer, they've used the first 15 really well and they're coming at you all guns blazing so in that context you'll be much more defensive. So you can play both roles depending on the situation and it's, it's all part of that, that learning curve and it's all part of the fun. Part of building the confidence and coming into high pressure games which you're going to in 20th over of this one day contest is being able to land your first ball right on the money straight away. So I'm going to put you guys under pressure to do that. You've had no looseners but your mind's beginning to tick over now into the context and the challenge ahead of you. So hopefully we'll see your first ball right on the spot. First ball, was it right on the spot? No, no, down the side, probably a wide really. Sometimes you'll keep watching the batsman and as you're practicing maybe just to a certain batsman you probably bowled a few dot balls and he's probably itching to play a good shot just to get a, a good feel of bat and ball while he's practicing. You can sense it maybe in his movements that as you're running through the crease you can see his feet moving and you know you may have to change something different. Well an interesting first over there. We talked about that first ball being critical and talk me through the first ball you bowled. So I'll give him a little bit of flight, try and get him interested. Turn the ball around and just missed it. But a missed stumping, so you've beaten him in the flight, but unfortunately the keeper missed the stumping and you know that could frustrate you and contaminate the rest of your over, but yeah. fortunately you managed to keep sort of a level head and come back from that. And then later in the over he looked to use his feet against you and hit you over the top. I noticed a subtle difference, the ball after he hit you over the top with the good shot. Yeah. Something different in the pace that you were bowling. It was a bit quicker, a bit flatter bit less spin on it trying to get him to try and do it again. We've seen the sort of advent of 2020 cricket and what that's done for shot selection, commitment to shots and the variation and skill that bowlers need to have. Everything's becoming so much more finely tuned so I think it's encouraging that despite the challenges being greater it, you know it gives us more opportunity to get the skills right. It's important to think of your one day bowling in variations as almost like going through some gears so what I'll try and do now is demonstrate the end ranges of those gears, so a very slow ball and a very quick ball. But once you've got the feel of those deliveries, you can actually bring them into around the middle where you stock ballers as well and have subtle variations either way. What I'm looking to do here is take the pace off the ball completely. And we know that in one day cricket, a lot of batsmen love the pace. What we actually have seen over the last five years is spinners coming into the game again through 2020 cricket. And this is probably because people are taking pace off the ball. So in trying to bowl this delivery again, it's really important that we don't give too many clues away about the pace of the delivery in our run up. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and show the batsman that I'm attacking the crease. So in my last few paces of my run up, I'm going to be aggressive towards the crease. So the signals he picks up are that it's going to be a heavy, quicker ball. You're trying to practice being unpredictable and I think that's what one day cricket tends to be about. This area here is critical in that I actually tried to accelerate into the crease to make him think that the ball was coming quickly. At this point, this is where I was trying to release the ball a little bit further back and slow my arm down at this point. And then I was looking to drive through and exaggerate that follow through even more. As I get to the crease, this part of my action slows down and I can actually slow my arm down at this point and try and release the ball, probably from a slightly further back position than normal. But then once that split second is gone, I'm looking to drive through as fast as I can and even exaggerate even more my follow through. That's the probably another art itself, knowing when the batsman's going to come down and knowing what length and how slow you should bowl it. But now I'm going to look to bowl a quicker ball and I'm going to use the second half of my run up to really put some energy in. 
The key for me in bowling the quicker ball we talked about is trying to combat the sweep shot. So I'm actually looking to get the ball as full as possible on around middle and off stump so that the ball's not drifting down the leg side. And I'm not only just trying to stop the batsman scoring, but I'm looking to trap him LBW if we think that he's going to be sweeping. Once I've got myself in a really strong position, I want to feel this front foot really strong down on the floor. And that feels like my accelerator. When that's very, very strong and in a very strong position and all my weight's over my front leg, I can then follow through like a quick bowler towards the target. We've got to get the batsman to mistime the delivery, so then he mistimes his shot. So in this period I was slower, and then once this front foot landed down, that's when I really drive through and get the quicker ball through. Okay lads, we're just going to move the match situation on a little bit. Richard's been batting really well, he's played a few aggressive shots, and we'll now begin to think that this is the 35th over, he's perhaps 40, 50 not out, and he's looking to take the game a little bit to you. So this is where the variations are going to really come in. If you just bowl one way, you slow your run up down slightly, but then you're looking to bowl that heavier ball that we talked about. What we're trying to do is slow the gears down in your yep. run up and get the pace added back in in that last yard. As you hit the crease, all you're focusing on is hitting the target full and straight. Okay, it doesn't have to be 90 miles an hour. It's a firm, quickish yeah. ball that's full and straight because it's meant to be quicker than your stock ball. Yeah. And providing it's quicker than your stock ball, you've deceived him. Or well, bowled. So you looked as if you saw him coming down the wicket there and you just held that one back. The batsman has been expecting the quicker pace and he's just chipped the ball up into hopefully an easy catch to either mid off or extra cover. Between the age of 15 to 19, I just bowled by myself and I learned everything just by bowling for hours and hours. And I think it's important that you've just got to let a spinner bowl and let him get a feel of it. And a coach maybe try not to get too much involved because the player himself must feel it. A coach cannot make the player feel it. A player must feel it himself. And that can only be done by bowling hours and hours. If I am this detective trying to work out how he's going to play, if the detective's doing his job, why would he turn his back on the clues? Yeah. Because everybody is a bowler, you bowl the ball and then you walk this way. I get the ball back, thank you, and then I turn around and everyone's fresh and ready to start again. If the batsman's giving me the clues after I've bowled it, why wouldn't I just keep watching him? So in some way I'm trying to knock his confidence or his commitment to his next shot because I know that one of my best balls could be hit out of the ground. But I need to put some doubt in his mind. So one way, without even bowling the ball, I could do that is to shout to the deep mid wicket and move him slightly because then I'm telling the batsman I know where you're looking to hit it and then we're running in to bowl. I know what I'm going to bowl but he's less sure about what he's trying to do. This is all about the match situation. He's looking to play his best shot, we've got to take him off that game. We've seen people like Shane Warne and Murray Litherin, huge spinners of the ball, and they've redefined spin bowling in world cricket. Those kind of talents come around very rarely. So for the rest of us, we have to have a blend of a spinning delivery, but also the ability to work out the chemistry of what the batsman's trying to do. And if we're then well drilled enough to be accurate when we put that plan into place, then that's the best we can do. The interesting thing is that it's not actually the pace that it comes out at that's important. It's the pace it looks like it's come out at. So we're trying to deceive the batsman. And to me, it's not so much how you do it, okay, but when you choose to do it. That's going to be really important. And we can now look at building in this different pace in the run-up over the last few yards to see how that feels for you. We're trying to deceive him and we're trying to make him expect a quicker ball than is going to be delivered. So the last few yards are going to be driving through. The deception comes from the follow-through as much as it does from the setup. You know, the, the interesting thing about bowling slow is the deception comes from the follow through as much as it does from the, the setup. Okay, so we don't just run up and pull the pin out and throw it up. Okay, we're trying to get the ball to dip. The front half of the action gets the ball up in the air. So if we can hold a front arm up, that'll get the ball up. If you're pitching the ball short, generally, it's because your front arm's not doing the work. The second half of your action gets the ball to drop shorter because it's spinning and dipping down. It's knowing when to do it, that's the skill. What we might look at now is a few ways that I would, in a one-day match situation, try and use the crease to deceive the batsman.
he's quite aggressive there. So we've seen that he was quite strong when the ball was just outside off stump. He was very good when he'd got his arms to reach at the ball. So one of the tactics we might use is to try and cut the angle down and get the ball tight into his legs. As an off spinner, I've got a leg side field anyway. So if I can cramp him up, it's gonna stop him swinging with all that arm length. So we can see how I tried to use the angle of the crease here to get in wider and fire the ball in full and at leg stump. And because he couldn't get his arms out at the ball, it tucked him up and got him off strike and hopefully a new batsman down at that end. One of my strengths has been bowling close into the stumps here, but then if I try and bowl a line outside off stump, what can happen is because I'm aiming the ball outside off stump, my wrist can get into a position where I undercut the ball, meaning that the ball comes out as an undercutter spinning forwards like that and the ball will hit the pitch there missing the seam. Changing my attack line here to come wider of the crease allows me to bowl in line with the line outside off stump there rather than there. And one of the important things when you're starting to learn about these variations or if you're coaching somebody that's working on this area is that for the bowler even a slight variation between somebody that gets close to the stumps and somebody that's looking to change to say two or three inches away that will feel like the biggest change ever you've bowled your normal stock ball and then you've bowled a ball that was a variation if you show me where you think your feet landed for your first ball probably about there is it okay and what about for your second ball well i was hoping to get a bit wider Okay, the first one landed there and the second one landed about there. So that's exactly what we were talking about, that you felt you moved probably a foot. Yeah. So if you're trying to use that as a variation, you need to be realistic about where you're landing. A lot of coaches talk about, this is my arm ball, this is my off spinner, this is my left arm orthodox spin or my normal leg spinner. And there's sort of like end components. But what I'm trying to get across today is that there's so many different blends between all those deliveries and that the bowler must feel that you're the one that's in control of it. Generally the difference between the sort of normal county players or minor counties players or good club cricketers and international cricketers is the guys that can deliver time after time under pressure and that's more about the mindset the guys that are not cluttered by thinking about technique and so I think you've learned very quickly today because your mind's been in the right place with the with the match situation. Sometimes you know just just turning the ball puts a doubt in a batsman's mind and, and, and you can bowl the next few balls in the right area not even try and turn it it's just trying to create that doubt.